Hello everyone, my name is Melderon, and welcome to another Classic WoW guide from us at ClassicWoww.live. This is a collaborative work by myself, Taladrill, and Kenko, who laid most of the groundwork for this guide. Today we are going to cover two important concepts in Classic WoW, tanking and threat. These are two related subjects that most associate with tanks, however threat is important to every class and knowing how either to increase and maintain threat or to decrease and regulate threat is something everyone should know. For the full written threat guide with many more examples, check out the classicwow.live link in the description. Let's get started by talking about what a tank's role really is. A tank is basically a meat shield. If you decide to tank, your job is to direct most, if not all, of the incoming damage from monsters or bosses to you. In this way, you protect others as well as reduce any pressure on the healer, allowing he or she to focus on healing you. In this way, your priority is taking damage, not dealing damage. Although, you still want to do damage, as that will make you an effective tank. But we will talk about that in a few slides. Finally, it is also important to consider that, as a tank, you will have to coordinate pulls and perhaps even boss fights, as many times the tank is the leader of the group or raid. But can every class tank? Not exactly. Even though all classes can gain aggro and therefore could theoretically tank, only some classes are equipped to deal with damage effectively as part of their class role. There is a total of four classes that have built-in functionality to mitigate, reduce, or survive high amounts of damage. Those classes are warriors, druids, paladins, and shamans. And these four classes belong in one of three tank tiers. In tier one are warriors and druids. They both sport static increases to their threat generation via defensive stance in warriors and bear form in druids, and have high armor values. Warriors shine due to their ability to parry, and because of their shields, allowing them to block. Blocking is crucial because it allows them to avoid incoming critical strikes or crushing blows and reduce incoming damage. Druids shine because of their high single target threat generation and high inherent stamina and armor. But what really sets warriors and druids apart is their ability to redirect a mob or boss's attacks to them via a taunt or growl ability, which puts them at the top of the threat table. We will talk about threat very soon. Taunt is extremely important in dungeon and raid environments as redirecting damage to you can, in many cases, stop a wipe from happening. In tier two are paladins. They, like warriors, wear plate armor and can equip shields for high damage mitigation. However, they do not have shield block abilities to predictively avoid crits and crushing blows like warriors. Also, paladins can produce the highest amount of AoE threat, making them excellent dungeon tanks. However, paladins fall short of tier 1 for two reasons. The first is that they are mana based. Therefore, what they can produce as far as threat is concerned is finite. If they run out of mana, they cannot use any of their abilities and therefore cannot increase their threat generation. Second, and perhaps the most damning, is that they do not have a taunt-like ability. This fact severely limits Paladins from becoming raid tanks. However, if you want to tank as a Paladin, do it. In Classic WoW, it's important to do what makes you happy. Just realize it will not be easy to do endgame content as a protection Paladin, as Warriors and Druids will almost always get tank spots and raids before you. Finally, in Tier 3 are Shamans. Like Paladins, they do not have a taunt and are mana based. But in addition to those points, they can only equip male armor, severely reducing their damage reduction. Therefore, Shaman tanks succumb to the same fate as Paladin tanks. Shamans can be great emergency tanks and have shown to have the ability to tank 5-man content just fine. If you are interested in learning more about Shaman tanks, check out my Shaman tanking guide. I would also like to mention that, especially early on, you can tank 5-man or group content as a Hunter or Warlock. Some pets, like the Voidwalker, and certain animals have taunt-like abilities and can tank in a pinch. However, keep in mind, these taunt-like abilities just add threat and do not work the same way taunt does. We will talk about taunt later. Now that we know who can tank, let's talk about how to tank. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's just go over an extremely basic tanking cycle. This cycle represents what tanks primarily go through for every pull. First, a good tank will mark the mob so the DPS know who to attack and in what order. Next is to pull the group strategically so that you limit pulling other mob packs and limit damage to the rest of your party. This will also establish initial threat on the mobs. Third, the tank will use abilities to maintain threat on all of the enemies. It is important for your DPS to attack mobs in order, so you have an easier time spreading out threat to multiple mobs. Finally, this hopefully will not happen often, 
but you will also have to regain threat using a taunt ability from time to time. As a tank, you will be rinsing and repeating these steps often, so get comfortable with it. We will go more in depth into each of these steps as we go through the presentation. We've been talking about threat a lot, but what is threat and how does it work? It's imperative to spend a good amount of time on this topic as knowing how you and others accumulate threat will make you a better tank. To understand threat, we will first discuss a related term known as aggro. Having aggro on an enemy or group of enemies means that those enemies want to attack you as you have the highest amount of threat compared to others in your group. Threat is a numeric value that everyone, not just the tank, accrues over the course of combat. Threat can be attributed to one or all mobs as some abilities just add threat to the mob you're attacking, while some abilities apply to all mobs. Almost all abilities in the game generate some amount of threat, so knowing how abilities deal out threat is important for all roles not just tanks. However, you, as the tank, want to have the most threat on all enemies, in almost all circumstances. Let's go over how threat is generated. In most circumstances, abilities deal threat equal to the amount of damage that they do. In other words, they have a 1x threat multiplier. So, if you do 50 damage to a mob, then you also produce 50 threat to that mob. Pretty simple. However, there are many abilities that have a different threat modifier which can be higher or lower than one, or produce a fixed amount of threat. For example, defensive stance in warriors increases all threat by 1.3 times, making it easier to tank as a warrior as your abilities accrue 1.3x more damage than the damage they produce. Other abilities like Heroic Strike and Maw inherently produce more threat than what their associated damage is. There are three character classes in the game which have inherent abilities to modify their threat output via different threat modifiers other than 1x. Warriors in Berserker or Battle Stance produce less threat with this 0.8x multiplier, but it can also produce more threat in Defensive Stance with a 1.3x multiplier. Druids can produce a range of threat with 0.8x in Cat Form, 1.3x in Bear Form, and 1x in all other forms. Finally, rogues have a static threat reduction of 0.8x all the time. Threat is generated by many ways, not just via damage. Threat can also be accrued via pulling mobs, both single and multi-pulls, buffing or healing someone who is in combat, your proximity to a mob, by gaining power of any kind, mana, health, rage, or energy, by using some items, or via enchants. Threat follows two important rules. The first is that threat is additive throughout the course of combat, in other words, threat keeps adding all the time. You can increase or decrease the rate at which you accrue threat, so that you can pull a mob or allow someone else to pull off of you, but you cannot remove threat unless you use an ability like Vanish. The other rule is that threat modifiers always act multiplicatively. This means that if there is more than one threat modifier at work, the game multiplies them. As an example, let's use the warrior. Let's pretend our warrior deals 50 damage is in defensive stance and has defiance talented. In this circumstance, we multiply 50 by the defensive stance modifier and the defiance modifier. So if we multiply 50 by 1.3 from defensive stance and 1.15 from defiance, we get a total of 74.75 threat. This multiplicative nature applies to all threat modifiers. Let's now go over each way threat can be produced. As we have covered, threat is generated by damage. However, it is important to realize that misses and resists don't add to your total threat. Also, critical strikes don't add any bonus threat. So if you crit for 155 and there are no modifiers at work, you only produce 155 threat, not more than that. As I've stated, one damage equals one threat unless modifiers are at work. In the picture, we have a mage hitting a mob with a frostbolt for 483 damage. Therefore, the mage gains 483 threat to that mob. However, let's go over two examples of non-1x threat modifiers. We will again use the Warrior. In these examples, the Warrior uses Heroic Strike rank 8 to produce 150 damage in both Battle Stance and Defensive Stance to highlight the two different modifiers. In Battle Stance, the total threat is 268. After adding the damage, 150, and the Static Heroic rank 8 threat bonus, 185, and then multiplying the sum by 0.8. In the Defensive Stance example, we do the same thing, but at the end we multiply by 1.3 instead of 0.8, because the warrior is in defensive stance. Now we produce 435.5 total threat by the attack. Here we highlight how much more threat we can produce in defensive stance as a warrior. Threat is also generated by healing. 
Yes, you healers out there need to also watch your threat too. Healing generates threat with a 0.5x modifier. In other words, only half of your heal amounts are transferred to threat. An example is if you heal a friendly target for 100, you will produce 50 threat. However, something very important to keep in mind is that threat from healing is evenly distributed to all mobs. In the previous example, if there was only one mob, you would produce 50 threat attributed to that mob. But now, let's pretend that there are three mobs and you heal the tank for 600 health. So, 600 times 0.5 is 300 total threat. But since there are three mobs, we divide 300 by 3 for 100 threat attributed to each of the three mobs. This is why you have to give your tank time before healing, and is also why you don't want to have a healing over time effect on the tank before he or she pulls. When the tank pulls, they will have minimal threat on the mobs, especially on the mobs they are not targeting. If you're a healer, give your tank a few moments to initialize aggro before healing. A spot of good news is that any overhealing you do does not produce any threat. Overhealing is not a good thing to do, as it essentially is a waste of mana, but at least not something you will be penalized for threat-wise. Oh, and if you're a paladin, you get an additional 0.5x reduction to threat for a total of 0.25x. This means that if you heal for 100 health, you only produce 25 threat as a paladin. So heal away. Threat can also be generated via buffing while in combat. For example, if you're a priest and use Power Word Fortitude on a tank, you will produce some threat. The amount of threat these buffs produce is small, but there are some buffs that generate substantial amounts of threat. A good example of this is the warrior ability, Battle Shout. Battle Shout is an AoE buff that provides extra attack power to anyone within its range. If a warrior in defensive stance uses Battle Shout rank 7 and buffs himself and two allies while fighting three mobs, the warrior will produce 91 threat to each of those mobs, as Battleshot rank 7 produces 70 base threat per person buffed. However, since the warrior is in defensive stance, that value is bumped up to 91 thanks to the 1.3x modifier. This results in a total of 273 threat. But remember, this value is distributed among all mobs. Since there are 3, we divide by 3 for our original total of 91 threat per mob. There are also debuffs that cause threat. An example is the warrior ability Demoralizing Shout, which produces a fixed amount of threat per mob it affects. In this example, the warrior casts rank 5 of Demoralizing Shout and produces 43 threat per mob. However, the warrior is in defensive stance, and that threat is bumped up to 55.9 threat per mob. Since Demoralizing Shout is not contingent on how many people you buff, as in Battle Shout, Demoralizing Shout is better for larger pulls or if your allies are all out of Battle Shout's range. Threat can also be generated by power gains. However, natural regeneration of power does not cause threat. This means that if you are a rogue, warrior, or mana user and you regen or gain energy naturally, you will not cause additional threat. However, if you use an item or talent that provides a boost to energy, this will produce threat. Examples are the warrior talents on Bridled Wrath and Blood Rage, as they generate threat outside of normal mechanics. Using potions that provide you energy will also add threat. For Rage and Energy, each point you gain will produce 5 threat. For Mana, you will only produce 0.5 threat per point. Since Mana is theoretically limitless, you produce less threat per point gained. Keep in mind that any threat increases via power gains are static and are not affected by any kind of threat modifier. Class abilities and talents can also generate threat. All of the examples here are abilities each class has that can reduce or increase the threat they produce. This is not an exhaustive list, but the take home message here is that you should think about what abilities you have and how they can help manage your threat. Let's briefly go over some of these examples. As you can see, Defensive Stance and Bear Form both increase the threat in Warriors and Druids. Heroic Strike, Sunder Armor, Maul, and Swipe to have fixed threat generation amounts in Warriors and Druids. Earthshock and Rockbiter Weapon in Shamans also produce additional threat. Earthshock has a 2x threat modifier, while Rockbiter has fixed amount of threat for each rank. Finally, there's two examples of abilities that reduce threat, Fade in Priests and Vanish in Rogues. Priests and Rogues will want to use these abilities if they pull aggro on mobs. Finally, let's go over how items and enchants can generate and modify your threat. I've also added in two more buffs that we didn't talk about previously, as they are buffs that reduce threat, not add it. These buffs are Blessing of Salvation from Paladins and Grace of Air Totem from Shamans. These buffs reduce the base threat of a friendly target by 0.8x and 0.7x, respectively. There are also items that can affect threat as a proc, 
Two examples are the Stealth Blade, which can reduce threat by 55 when it procs, and Black Amnesty, which can reduce threat by 540 when it procs. These are great for rogues to acquire so they can increase their DPS while worrying a bit less about threat generation. Finally, there are enchants that can also affect base threat, before the effect of any modifiers. One is Enchant Gloves Threat, which slightly increases all base threat with a 1.02x modifier. On the other end, an enchant that reduces threat slightly, Enchant Cloak Subtlety, which reduces base threat with a 0.98x modifier. After hearing all that, I hope that I've conveyed that it is important to balance and either maximize or minimize your threat depending on your class and role. Tanks will need to maximize their threat while all others will need to monitor their threat closely and perhaps reduce their healing or DPS if needed. Because of all of this, it is imperative to download add-ons that track your aggro and threat so you can see if you are in danger of pulling off the tank or if you are about to lose aggro if you are the tank. Finally, it is important to consider how consumables and professions can help you maintain threat. Tanks can increase their threat by increasing your DPS. Therefore, flasks, potions, and even engineering tools that cause damage all get added to your threat production. Make sure to keep that in mind. By this point, we've talked a ton about threat and we're almost done, but we need next to cover how aggro is transferred from player to player. It's important to know, if you're the tank, how much threat does another player have to do in order to pull off of you? Well, it actually depends if they are in melee range or not. If a player is in melee range, the player has to produce 110% of your current threat. That means that if at a moment in combat you're producing 100 threat, for example, while another player is producing 110 threat, that player will pull off of you. For players outside of melee range, they have to produce 130% of your current threat. However, it's important to realize that if a caster or healer is in melee range, then melee rules apply. In other words, if a healer is standing near a mob that you are attacking, then they only have to produce 110% of your current threat to pull off of you. Therefore, if you are a caster or healer, make sure to stay out of melee range if you can. This threat transferring system makes it easier to maintain aggro, but it also makes it hard to get aggro back, as if you are a tank, you have to then produce 110% threat of the person who pulled off of you. This is why taunt-like abilities are so important, and why druids and warriors are tier 1 tanks. We can think of a fun example to kind of talk about this concept. Let's pretend there's a warrior, hunter, and mage in a group. The warrior is tanking, and the hunter and mage are both pushing right to the edge of what they can do DPS-wise. So they are producing approximately 125% threat of what the tank is producing. They're at range, so it's okay. But whoops, the hunter gets a big aim shot crit, and the mob comes at him. No big deal, he says, as he feigns death and wipes aggro. However, the mob is passing in the melee range of the mage. So in this circumstance, the mage is the highest on the threat table at this point, and the mob one-shots the mage. This is why it's always important to recognize and realize what range you're at compared to other players in your party and the mobs you're fighting. Alright ladies and gents, we've covered threat pretty well. There's still more examples to cover, but if you want to go over everything, head over to ClassicWild.Live and read Taladrill's guide. The link is in the description. For now, let's head back to the tanking cycle. The first part of the cycle is the pre-pull. It is important to mark mobs for two reasons. The first is that it ensures, hopefully, that the DPS will attack mobs in the order you want, making it easier for you, the tank, to apply threat to other targets at your leisure. The second reason is that it puts way less pressure on the healer as the DPS will be attacking mobs who you have the most threat on, focusing the damage to you, primarily. Usually you will mark the mob you want to kill first with a skull, the second mob to be killed with an X, while leaving remaining mobs blank. Try to kill mobs first that have annoying abilities like silences, heals, and disarms. If there are more than three mobs, use a different marker or just switch marks as mobs die. Just make sure to tell your party if you change the mark regime. Also, make sure to hotkey the marks so you can switch marks very quickly. There are also special marks. The moon mark is usually reserved to mark the mob that you want a mage to sheep, while the blue square mark usually goes to hunters for ice trapping. There are of course other CC abilities that other classes can do, so pick marks that you want to use and let the other party members know. After marking, make sure to check your healer's mana. If it is full, then you are probably good to go. If it is low, ask your healer if they want to drink. If you are unsure, ask anyway. 
It is better to wait a few more seconds than to wipe. Trust me, I've been there on both sides of the coin as a tank and a healer. Also, before pulling, make sure there aren't any patrols moving through the area. The last thing you want to do is pull extra mobs. A few seconds reserved for planning the pull can mean the difference between victory or defeat. The next step is actually pulling the mobs. There are many ways to do this. You can head pull by moving into the monster's range, you can use a ranged weapon or ability to pull a pack from afar, or you can just say screw it and charge in. Charging is of course the most fun, but keep in mind you should only charge in when there are no other packs that are in danger of being pulled. In most scenarios, pulling from a greater distance is the most strategic and the safest. After the mobs are engaged, there are usually two things that are required. The first is that you want to position mobs in a comfortable group that allows you to attack all of them without moving too much. The second is that you should try to turn mobs away from the rest of your party. There are monsters that have cleave and frontal cone abilities that can hit your allies if they are in range. Spinning yourself away from the party will ensure they don't hit them, which will, in turn, reduce stress on your healer. Finally, line of sighting or LOSing is a vastly important strategy when fighting ranged targets like casters or archers. There are many walls and structures built into dungeons that provide cover from ranged attacks. A good tank will find these structures and use them to their advantage. The way to LOS is to either head pull or ranged pull a mob, then immediately run for cover. Since the ranged targets cannot see you, they will run to your position, allowing you to group up all mobs regardless of their ranged attack abilities. It is imperative to make sure, however, to let your DPS and healers know that you are going to LOS, so they do not attack prematurely and mess up grouping strategy by pulling aggro. Tanking a single target is relatively simple. As a tank, you have to produce more threat than anyone else attacking the mob. To do this, you will use abilities that cause more threat than normal. For protection warriors, these abilities are Shield Slam, Revenge, and Sunder Armor in that priority, or Bloodthirst, Revenge, and Sunder Armor if you are tanking as a Fury Warrior. You can also use Heroic Strike as a Rage Dump if you have extra Rage. For a Druid, you are going to use Maul and Swipe to maintain aggro. Just rinse and repeat and keep an eye on your threat add-on. If you are in a long boss fight and see a party member creeping up on the threat table, don't be afraid to let them know. Tanking multiple mobs is going to be a bit more tricky as AoE threat is not easy to produce in Classic WoW. However, it is important to establish and maintain threat on as many enemies as possible. To do this, you are going to use AoE abilities like Demoralizing Shout and Warriors and Demoralizing Roar in Druids and Battle Shout. You can also use Thunderclap as a warrior, but you will have to be in Battle Stance to use it. Remember, Battle Stance both increases your damage taken and decreases the threat you produce. So if you decide to Thunderclap, you may want to do it early, then immediately switch into Defensive Stance. This is called Stance Dancing. There are also multi-target abilities, like Swipe and Cleave, that will hit multiple enemies, spreading out your threat as well. However, you shouldn't just rely on these abilities. You should regularly switch targets and apply Sunder Armor or other abilities to spread out your threat even more. Maintaining as much threat on as many enemies as you can is paramount. A tank's life isn't easy. Not only do you have to produce as much threat as possible, you also have to mitigate as much damage as you can. There are thankfully a number of abilities warriors can utilize to do this, including Shield Block, Shield Wall, and Demoralizing Shout, which all reduce damage. Moreover, blocking an attack can severely reduce or even eliminate the chance of being critically struck or receiving a crushing blow. A critical strike will increase the damage by 100%, while a crushing blow only happens when you're fighting a mob 4 levels higher than you. This results in a damage 150% higher than the normal attack. Also, keep in mind, disarm can also be useful by reducing melee damage from a mob as you disarm them of their primary weapon. Druids can also use Bark Skin to reduce damage and can also shapeshift to heal themselves if needed. You will also mitigate damage via your stats. Stamina will increase your hit points, making it take more to kill you but not mitigating damage. However, these other stats will mitigate damage. Armor will reduce melee damage taken. Dodge will increase your chance to totally dodge an attack. Defense rating will decrease the chance you are critically struck as well as also increasing the chance for mobs to miss you while also increasing your dodge, parry, and block as well. Parry will increase your chance of parrying an attack, totally removing its damage, and decreasing the time between your next auto attack. Agility will increase armor, dodge, and crit. Block value will increase how much you block with a shield. Block chance increases the percentage of the time you will block, and finally, strength will not only increase your attack power, but it will also increase the amount you block with a shield. All of these stats can help you mitigate damage and should be sought after in the order displayed on the slide if you plan on tanking as a warrior. 
there are many abilities within the warrior toolset that can be used situationally that you want to be familiar with. Intimidating Shout can fear multiple mobs, making a sticky situation more manageable. Blood Rage will increase your rage at the cost of some health. Challenging Shout is an AoE taunt that can instantly bring a fight back into your control. Shield Bash silences a target that is casting. Last Stand, if talented, will temporarily grant you extra health. Piercing Howl, if talented, reduces the movement speed of all enemies while Hamstring reduces the movement of one enemy. Both of these spells are useful if mobs are running away. Mocking Blow will not increase threat, but will force a mob to attack you. This is very useful if your taunt is resisted. Finally, Berserker Rage will make you immune to fear and incapacitate while also regenerating rage. For Druids, Frenzied Regeneration, which converts rage to health, is the only tanking-oriented situational ability for Druids. However, they also have a host of other abilities at their disposal, including their heals and abilities like Entangling Roots. These abilities will require you to leave bear form, but, in many dungeons, Druids bring more utility to the table than warriors ever will. This is especially true when it comes to Innervate and Rebirth. Well everyone, that does it for the tanking and threat guide. If you like this guide, please leave a like below. If you are interested in other videos we make here at Def Camp Melder on TV, drop a subscribe because we got a lot more guides coming, Def Talks, and other types of videos. If you want to follow Def Camp on Twitch, the link will be in the description. Also, guys, if you're a fan of podcasts, we do a podcast regularly called Def Talk. You can find that on Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. You can also follow us on Twitter and join the Def Camp Melder on TV community on Discord. Also, I would like to take this time to thank our patrons Early Bird, Flozy B, Steven Tegnelia, Discipulo, Jeff Rags, Aspiring Musician, Brandug Media, Minoru, Wiznips, Cargos, Xenon Kaltz, Gaming Pass 30, Jonas Strum, and Andrew Depatrini. Thanks guys, you really make this stuff possible, and I couldn't do it without you. Also guys, don't forget to check us out on ClassicWild.live, there's a lot more guides on there, and a lot more content for you to engage in. Also, the link to the ClassicWild.live Discord will be in the description. It's a very large and active community, with many content creators for you to engage with. I really hope this guide was informative and demystified tanking and threat in general. Hopefully many of you will try tanking because of this guide. Also, if you're interested in viewing this presentation, I will provide a Google Drive link as a pinned comment. Well guys, it's been a lot of fun. Keep on the lookout for more guides like this. Have a great day. Keep on keybinding and grinding. And take it easy.